If you have one of these Chinese CNC's with the aluminum bed, you've probably had some headaches with clamping stuff down, alignment struggles, or accidentally crashing your bit into the aluminum channel. Today, I'll show you how to build the best spoil board specifically for these Chinese CNC's. It holds strong, it's easy to replace, you can quickly create repeatable reference points, and best of all, you get to keep the strength of the aluminum T-Track. No fancy hardware needed, all you need is some MDF, carpet tape, and an hour of your time to get everything going. Let's get to it. By the way, I've seen a ton of complicated foil board setups online. Threaded inserts, special clamps, and complex alignments. It doesn't need to be complicated. MDF and carpet tape keep it simple and strong, and you'll be able to hold down all your work surfaces. We want to make the MDF slats as wide as possible, and always staying within the reference of the CNC. So to do this, we're going to use the full width slots. See a full width here, but it starts here. So we're gonna start here, as far as the CNC goes. And our T-bolts won't fit in the, all the slots. So we wanna make sure we only utilize the full width slots. So to do that, we're gonna start off at the closest position that the CNC will be able to cut. And we're going to skip over all the slots that are squared off. So in this case, we are gonna go over to this slot, and that is four and three eighths. Next, we'll transfer that over to the table saw. Now we'll measure the distance from the bit all the way to the front, which is about 32 and a half. Now that I'm happy with the fit, we can start taping them down. To clean off the table, you can use either mineral spirits, alcohol, or I'm just going to use the tack cloth. Then we can use a razor blade to cut it off. And this bit is actually even a little bit further over than the zero on the board, but that's okay since we're going to be using a much larger bit for the spoil board. And now we will measure the width and the length and bring it over to Fusion 360. Here we are in Fusion 360 and we're going to go up and create a sketch on the top plane of just a rectangle. And this will be the size of one of the MDF slats. So 4.375, 4 and 3 eighths, and 32 inches long for mine. Yours might be different. We're going to extrude this 0.75 because that's the thickness of the board. And then we're going to do a rectangular pattern. Super easy. On the object type, we're going to click on the body. The axis we're going to click on one of these vertical axes five times because that's the number of slats we have. And we're going to extend it 23 and a quarter minus one of the thicknesses of the boards. And that's because it starts off measuring at this point up here. I don't know why. I wish it measured it from down here to there for like the full length, but it doesn't. So minus one of the thicknesses of the board. Now just to verify, we're at 23 and a quarter. We can click on this edge up here after clicking on, on the measure tool. And down here, so we're at 23 and a quarter. So that is the first one. We'll be able to use this for the surfacing operation. And now I'm going to add some zero points. So I'm going to create a sketch on here. Just a rectangle and I'm going to dimension it. One inch. one inch. And now for our reference points, I'm going to put a few half inch circles along this line and then right in the center of these lines. So do one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. All right. And I'm going to make this a construction line. We're going to make all of these circles equal. 
and then we can just dimension them as 0.5. Okay, we're gonna just go through and constrain them really quick. So now we're gonna go through and just cut them in. <clears throat> so extrude. We're gonna do cut. And we're gonna go down 0.375. Sorry, do minus 0.375. Actually, let's do minus half an inch. Cut, okay. That still won't dig into our board, but it'll give us plenty of clearance. Oh man, I did that wrong. I do want them tangent. I just want them tangent on the other side. All right, all fixed. I'm happy with that. That looks good. Now I can say finish sketch and they should all be on there. And that way, when we put a board in here, at least a square board, our one one reference point will be right here. So now that we have our tabletop designed out, we can go over to design, manufacture. We're going to create a new setup. So you just up here, right next to manufacturing, click setup. It has the size that we would already like and our coordinates are correct. We are going to pick our stock point for our reference. It's right there. Our stock is just gonna be all zeros across. The next step is obviously we want to surface it. So in the 2D tab, there is a facing operation. We're gonna select our tools and I'm going to be using a 15 16 bit. Now this is just the bit I have. They have tools that are made for surfacing, which I will link in the description. For the geometries, we'll just select all of our faces. For the heights, the only one we're going to change is the bottom height. So, and that's going to be the depth that we cut to. So I'm gonna change the plane to the front plane so you guys can see. And we're going to change the bottom height or yeah, the bottom height to minus 0 0.02. So basically taking off half a millimeter. And now you can see that this bottom height is just a little bit lower and that'll be the cutting line. Passes, we will leave all this the same. And we can leave all this linking the same, linking the same too. So now you can see that the tool is going to cut at that point. So now the next step will be to make these little pockets. So to do that, we're going to do a 2D pocket. I'm gonna go through, I'm going to click on inside of all these holes. For the heights, we can leave that the same. So for the for this one on the bottom height, it's actually the selected contours, which is going to be the bottom of the pockets. We're not gonna leave any stock. I am going to do multiple depths at 0.25 each. Linking, we will do a helix and I'm gonna make that at like 30 degrees. And that should be it. Hmm. Uh, you know what? I picked the wrong tool for that. We'll edit this. It's still in the 15 16 tool. I'm going to use a quarter inch tool. Select. Okay. That is all over the place, but it only takes three minutes. So I will ignore how completely random that is. So now we can save two different G codes. We're gonna do one for the surfacing. Surface, we'll pick the facing operation, post. And then we're going to do another one for the one inch pockets. Operation, post. And that's it. I'll see you over at the CNC. Although there's a little bit of an area all the way in the back that wasn't actually surfaced, I'm really happy with the finish of this and I'm going to keep on moving. So the next step will be the, will be the guide holes. 
Now for the moment of truth. Yeah, that fits in there awesome. So here is the first part cut on the new spoil board and I'm really really pleased with how nice and even it is cutting how strong it is you can see that it cut clearly through all the way around there's no low spots or high spots even though this isn't the greatest quality wood so once again I'm really happy with it make sure you subscribe to my page like this video and leave a comment below if you want to see anything else CNC or woodwork working related